Burt County, North Carolina, in Morganton. North I'm Carolina. Used to the quiet lifestyle that comes with living in a rural place. Ooh. You get some weird characters here and there, but it's usually nothing too bad. Real quick, I always like the idea of living out like to where nobody's around like that. But when it comes to creepy stuff, I'm like, hey, I got a second. I got I gotta have a second thought about this because you know it's cool to have a nice land around your place, but then again, it's like you gotta make sure you have allies around you or something, some kind of reinforcement to back you up, something because you just can't be out there just by yourself. Um, but the cool thing about having a lot of land is that it's you know you have your own space and all that good stuff. But yeah, it would be scary if you don't have anybody around you, at least like some friendly people or some allies or somebody but anyway let's get back to the video a nice plot of land with my husband my work schedule fluctuates sometimes i work days sometimes i work nights this happened on a night that i was on my way home after a night shift so it had to be like 3 a.m my phone was almost dead i was hungry i was tired and i just wanted to get some food and head home I stopped at the gas station to get ten dollars worth of gas and also a packaged sandwich. One forty-four. I, I haven't seen that in ten cafe. years. Some sketchy guy was eyeing me for a little until he left the building without buying anything. After eating, I went outside to fill up the gas and then got back in the car. The smell of gasoline was extra pungent for some reason, so I was driving slow, especially since I was tired after a long day of work. Then something unexpected happened. The needle on the gas gauge suddenly dropped to E, and the low gas light came on and beeped. I had no idea what was going on. I'm not a car person, and I'd never run out of gas before this. Plus, the needle just suddenly dropped. Hmm. I thought at first that the computer was glitching, so I pulled over and restarted the car. What? But the needle was still on E. I tried to continue driving, but the engine died. I started having a panic attack. Ooh, that's I called scary. my husband first thing. And thank Ooh. God he picked up. Ooh. I asked him, how did my car run out of gas after I just filled up? That's As crazy. I got out of the car, I smelt gasoline. I told him this, and he said it sounds like I have a leak. He told me he'd head right over, and he'd call our roadside assistance company. But then I heard a car coming with no headlights. Uh -oh. Suddenly, it stopped. Uh -oh. Not far behind my car. No. I suddenly thought to bring up that sketchy guy who was watching me at the gas station. No. I asked my husband if there was a chance he did something to my car. He probably did. My husband's tone suddenly changed to sounding more concerned and worried. Oh, man. I said, yeah. If, if, my, if my wife was in this situation, man, I would be, I don't know, I, I would be so, I would be, first of all, the, the, the adrenaline would definitely be rushing. Man, I... Whoa, that's that's I don't have no words, man. Yes, there's a chance that he may have cut my fuel line. I didn't know what that meant. All I knew was I needed to run. I took my keys out of the ignition and shut the door and locked it so that the headlights would turn off. My phone was on like two percent, so I told him to text me when he's close. I ran off the road and towards the first house I could find. I ran down the long driveway and up the property to the front door. All the lights in the house were off. I still rang the bell multiple times anyway. Eventually, a light turned on, and then the door opened. A man in his 60s opened the door. Oh, my god! looked like he was just woken up. I asked him to let me in to hide and charge my phone. After a bit of explaining, he opened the door fully and let me in. I asked him... No idea, but he let her in. Yeah, Grandpa is, is, is definitely adventurous. Charger, and he said he'd go look for one and asked me to take a seat in the living room. I sat down, still in my nurse scrubs, feeling a mix Ooh, of emotions. A, a and, nurse scrubs? Dang. And called out from the kitchen asking me if I wanted some water. I said, yes, please. Little did he know, I saw his reflection in a mirror in the living room that gave visibility into the kitchen. I saw him fill a cup with water. Then I know for a fact, I saw him drop something into the water. He walked out of view of the mirror, but the faucet was still running. It ran for a solid 30 more seconds before he turned it off. He came back into the living room with a glass of water and handed it to me. I thanked him, and he sat down and just looked at me. Oh my goodness. I, I, I can't even... I had to pause it there because that's just like... 
that's just a terrible situation. You running from somebody, not somebody else trying to get you. And asked me to explain the situation again. I replied to him, I just really need a charger so that I could contact my husband. He said, oh, right, and went upstairs. I checked my phone, and it was on 1%. I used that remaining battery to send my current location to my husband just in case. Mm. Then smelt the glass of water, and although it didn't smell like anything, I knew he put something in it. Right. Now I had to make the decision of whether I should leave or not. Leave. On one hand, I needed to charge my phone badly. On the other, I was 99% sure he did something to this water. I heard him walking back down the stairs, and he said he doesn't have any iPhone chargers since he has an Android. After he said this, I got up and walked straight for the door. I'm not an idiot. Once outside, I ran back down the driveway to the road. I felt like throwing up. I couldn't believe two separate potential incidents from two different men happened in one night. I crept along the side of the road behind the trees. I took out my phone and sent my updated location, and right around now was when my battery died. I waited for until I saw familiar headlights of my husband's truck. I went out waving my arms, and thank God it was him. I got inside the truck and let all my emotions out, crying to him about what I just went through. Ooh. He brought us to my car, and there was no longer a car behind mine. My back window was shattered, though, and it appeared someone had gotten into the back seat but nothing of high value was left in my car to steal anyway. My car battery was also now dead. When I told my husband about the man who tried to potentially roofie me, he was so furious he wanted to go break down his door, but I told him no, let's just wait for the tow truck to come. We waited quite a while before it came. My car was towed to my dealership, where they would take the car in the next day. My husband was right. My car was vandalized and the fuel line was cut completely. Thank God I was off the next few days because I needed some time to mentally recover from this night. Dang. The idea that twice in one night, I was almost a victim of some sketchy men I just couldn't get over. Yeah, that's that's uh, <clears throat> that's a scary situation, guys. Let me turn on the lights. What? What in the world was about to happen to her, man? She got vandalized. And she was going for help, and the guy that she was going for help was trying to get her. You don't know what he had planned. He thought he 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 scored himself a a catch, waking up to somebody at the front door. That's why he was uh, adventurous, because this guy was a a weirdo. That is crazy.